Welcome Cosmic Explorers to our AstroVision 2024 live session where we are going to talk all about quarter two. Today we are going on this magical journey within quarter two. April's already happened. We're right in the midst of it and we still have June left to go. And this is where I am going to be answering all of your questions and diving deeper into our experiences thus far. So just to level set, this live session is part of the AstroVision 2024 course that is free for the entire year. You can sign up now and you'll get in, you'll get the 2024 overview, you'll get the quarter one and quarter two astrology videos, you will get a collective tarot reading for each quarter. So, and I believe there's one even for the overall. So there's um, private tarot readings in there for anybody that signs up and downloadable key date sheets. So I'm gonna be doing this every quarter throughout the year and, you know, being part of the AstroVision 2024 community ensures that you get first access, exclusive content, and your questions are the questions that take priority in these live sessions. Plus, who knows what spirit's going to bring? Um, as we get into these quarters, as we get into the second half of the year, there could be other things exclusively that will only be found for AstroVision 2024 members. So it's all free. You can find the link in the description box or in my profile. Go and click it there. Sign up absolutely free. All right. Let's start. Let's get stretched out here because we got good questions coming for this quarter too. So time to grab your natal charts. Let's get your questions prepared. You can always pop them in the chat, whether you are viewing this from Twitch or from YouTube. And let's take a quick peek at each month in quarter two while everybody gets settled and in, and then we will begin our questions. So you can see all of the fun. All of the fun is, is on the screen already. We are committed to broadening our horizons. That is what quarter two was all about. And when I set up all of this at the beginning of the year, had no clue. These were just what came to me intuitively, had no clue really what or how this was going to come about, but committed to broadening our horizons and freaking how with April. Whoa. So April, we had our Aries clusters. We had a Mercury retrograde in Aries. We had the great Chiron eclipse. We had the North Node Kazemi, Mars conjunct Saturn in Pisces, Mercury retrograde Kazemi, and Jupiter conjunct Uranus in Taurus. That all happened in this span of April. And April was highly intense. It was an intense time. It was an intense time for me. There was a lot that was... Um, grounded into. There was a lot that was changed, needed to change, needed to shed, needed to release, needed to recalibrate, rethink about things. Um, and it's not even done. Like these were, I really feel like as intense as April was, it was seedlings compared to what is coming up because this year, and we talked about this in the overview, this year in general is not about, it's not about the, like, it's a year of harvest. So that's first and foremost. So what we're doing this year is bringing things into our reality that is going to get us through the next X amount of time frame. And for me, I'm looking at that through the rest of this decade. There is some intense astrology coming up over the next five years. And that is really what this year we are preparing for. Think about it however you want. You are prepping for the future this year. You are not, you know the storm is coming. We see the storm getting ready. We may have some effects of that storm, like with in April with this Chiron eclipse. We are not in the storm yet. The storm has not arrived yet. That comes later. 
So if we see, we know, what do you do when storms come? Well, you start to, you know, prep your windows, prep your home, prep your business. You start to prep and prepare for what is coming. That is truly what I am seeing 2024 is all about. And that great Chiron eclipse, while you may have changed a lot of things, while things were brought in, it's all going to unravel over the next four or five years. And I got that number just for anybody that is interested in moons and things like that. Typically, the energy of an eclipse lasts the length of the totality of the clip. So every minute of totality equals potentially one year of energetic resonance that this moon is going to have. There was between four to five minutes of totality with the great Chiron eclipse, four to five years. Boom. Easy equation, easy math there. So that is all that happened in April. We are hot in the middle of May. We've got our Taurus clusters going on. We've got Jupiter in Gemini, all things Gemini, all kinds of crazy things happening in Gemini this month. In fact, it's like when Jupiter and Venus get into Gemini, like we want Gemini seasons to, and the sun, we want Gemini season to be there. We want Gemini energy. We want to get through this Taurus energy, but Taurus is like, nah, bro, that ain't going to happen. You're going to have to wait until June to really get into the Gemini vibe. You can start the party, but the party ain't going to get going until June. And then notable transits in May, the Uranus Kazemi, the Jupiter Kazemi, um, the Mars conjunct North Node in Aries, and the Venus conjunct Jupiter at the anoretic degree, the 29 degree point of Taurus. And May really, like, all of that happens after the new moon. So the new moon was on the 7th. We're on the 11th right now. That new moon is really ushering in a lot of these other energies, but it's it's just like Taurus, slow and steady. It is taking time to get there. So we're taking our time. We're biding our time. We're maybe frustrated with the amount of time it's taking, uh, depending upon how you work with Taurus energy. So that is May. And then getting into June, we have the Gemini clusters. So June is our last month of the year of 2024, where we have highly concentrated energy in one zodiac sign. Once we get through Gemini season, we begin to break apart a lot of that energy and things become less stellium-like, less, um, you know, concentrated, less direct in your face, so loud, you can't. You can't do anything about it. And we begin to just get more different energy, but more varied energy, more varied signs, more varied, um, you know, experiences, et cetera. So in June, we also have the summer solstice, which is when we start cancer season. So that now brings us into the heat of summer. And then notable transits are Jupiter trining Pluto retrograde, the Venus Kazemi, the Mercury Kazemi, um, Mercury and Venus's conjunction into Cancer, which is really exciting. That That is definitely a signature of June. And then we begin this trek, which won't come to a conclusion for years to come, of Saturn conjunct Neptune. Now, in June is where they get the closest that they're going to be, which is within a 10 degree orb. So that's a that's a very broad orb. Typically, I like to use three degree orbs for, you know, when we do Twitchy Tuesdays and stuff like that. But it is a notable because we want to be, the, the whole point of AstroVision 2024 is to be able to understand what is upcoming and be prepared, right? To um, learn how to work and ebb and flow with these energies and instead of just like, oh my God, wait, what what wave is crashing into me now? So knowing that this Saturn conjunct Neptune has a very long tail, right? This is going to be years to come. Um, that knowing what's happening now in June, when they get as close as they're going to get, you can start to journal about that. You can start to maybe tap into some of those energies a little bit more and that then is going to help you understand 
when actually the conjunction happens in the future. So that is our very quick overview wrap up of what is upcoming in this quarter. Again, the quarter two astrology overview is out right now on YouTube, on my Twitchy Tuesdays channel, as well as obviously it will also be in the AstroVision 2024 viewable all year long. Um, the On YouTube, it will come out on, I believe the 20th of this month is when we head into Gemini season. Hold on, let me consult the good old honeycomb. The 20th of May. So the quarter two video will come down off of YouTube. You will not be able to access it anymore. And then it will go and go behind the scenes for only those that are part of the AstroVision 2024 community. All right. So we have level set. Let's get to any questions. If you are joining us live, whether that is on YouTube or on Twitch, feel free to utilize the chat function Pop your questions in there of any astrology questions that you have for the quarter. And I've got the list of questions here. So let's get into them. All right. First question. Can you elaborate on any significant retrogrades happening this quarter and the best strategies for managing their effects? Well, Truly, there are retrogrades that are happening all month, April, May, June. Different planets are going retrograde. Um, the most notable one, in my opinion, for this quarter was the Mercury retrograde that occurred in April. We're already done with that. Um, we're just getting out of that shadow period now um, in May. So that really, for me, was the kind of the big one to be aware of just because it happened and occurred in April with all of the other energies of April with it being in Aries like there was just this heavy concentration on all of that energy so yep we have retrogrades nothing you know the significant one I feel has already occurred but if you're looking for strategies for managing retrogrades no matter what they are um I think one of the best strategies is really identifying the planets that tend to work with you the most or you are most in tune with, and then really looking back at retrograde periods for that particular planet and understanding how that, how you ebb and flow within those retrogrades. So for me, um, when I look back, and I, this isn't me personally, but just to give an example, let's say I work with Saturn a lot, right? I've got very heavy Capricorn placements in my natal chart. Again, this is not realistic for my scenario, but just as an, as an analogy and an example, um, I have a lot of Capricorn placements. Maybe I have a lot of uh, Aquarian placements. And so I work with Saturn and always am influenced by Saturn's transiting energies. I know that about myself. So when Saturn goes retrograde, those are the times that I want to pay attention to. Um, I want to get an accurate understanding of every time that Saturn goes retrograde, what happens when it goes retrograde in certain signs? How is that affecting me? Um, what other transiting influences tend to come up? What types of energies do I deal with? And that's where books like, let me just show this um, to you, books like A Honeycomb, which is I highly, highly recommend because not only do you get what's happening transit transits, but you also get how it's pinging your natal chart. So this is a customizable book to you and how you choose to read astrology and how you, what planets you choose to go with, what delineations you choose to utilize. So having a tool like this where you can, let me just show, like here's some of the book example inside where you've got notes that you can take, you've got daily notes you can take, utilizing this as a journal to really hone in on when these retrogrades happen, what occurs for you? That to me is one of the best strategies to utilize because now, again, you know when things come up and you can be prepared. 
So hopefully that answered, answered that question. And the next question is, with the sun moving into Gemini soon, just again, May 20th, what should we expect in terms of communication, travel, and intellectual pursuits? I love Gemini energy, Gemini rising. So Gemini is, you know, when the sun, Mercury, personal planets all get into Gemini, and then we're going to be blessed with Jupiter heading into Gemini this year. Um, it just, for me, you know, this is my first house, the sun also being that house of self, also being the, um, the part of identity, the energy of identity. You know, when it moves into Gemini, it I, personally, I think that it allows us and us as individuals to have a better grasp of what is being illuminated for us individually based on the house that that is in in your natal chart. So if let's say, for example, Gemini in your natal chart is in the 10th house, right? The 10th house of career, of aspirations, of, um, you know, I'm even, I'm even hearing the word like judgment, meaning judges, like having things being weighed out, having the ability to um, self-mastery, to grow, to be able to look at your landscape, the sun illuminating your landscape as an individual and what you are achieving in your life up to this point. As the sun then gets into Gemini, Gemini being in the 10th, there's this ability to think about it differently, um, communicate about it differently, um, be willing to explore in a different manner. Gemini is typically not long-term travel. That's its access point, Sagittarius. But it's those quick points, quick travels, where you go around your being, around your town, where you go um, around your state or Providence depending upon where you live, um, the short-term areas that you traverse and how can you traverse them differently? Um, when it comes to intellectual pursuits, right? The sun can definitely highlight, this is Gemini. So it's, it's not, it's that dualistic energy. It's the uh, it's the other side of the coin of Sagittarius where you're you're trying to gain this higher perspective and knowledge where with Gemini, the intellectual pursuits is like, I now have, the sun could maybe illuminate, I now have interest in this. So let's go back to this 10th house. All right, I've got a really great career going, but I am interested in adding another layer to my resume whatever that layer is, right? I am interested in maybe focusing on, um, let's just presentation styles and developing better presentations. So now from an intellectual perspective, the sun could come into Gemini and highlight other ways that you could choose to do that. Is it utilizing new technology like AI? Is it utilizing different um modalities to bring presentations forward, like Canva, and creation of different styles of um, presentations. Is it taking or getting into groups like Toastmasters and providing presentations out there? Is it doing speaking in person so that way you can sharpen the communication skills that you need to present better? And you can add these things to your resume. That is, to me, what the sun moving into Gemini could highlight. Now, again, this is how you need to look at your natal chart, the house that this ends up becoming in or houses this is in, depending upon what you utilize for astrology. and then you can kind of work backwards from there. All right, next question. How does the Venus transit this quarter affect relationships, finances, and creative projects? Well, God love Venus for being in her home side of Taurus throughout right this month of May. 
Um, she will conjunct Jupiter at that anoretic degree in Taurus. So, I mean, and then getting into Gemini. So this quarter in particular, Venus has been through Aries in April, May, she is in Taurus, June, she is in um, Gemini, primarily will go into Cancer, etc. And I really want to focus on with this question, what we're, what we're experiencing in May and in June with her as she goes through Taurus and Gemini. She loves Taurus. This is her home sign. This is the energy that Venus is so well known for. And even getting into Gemini, where she can be very witty, she can be very, um, you know, like just ease and grace with relationships, wanting to have fun in relationships, wanting to um, explore new ways to create intimacy in relationships, you know, that and then having the grounding first in Taurus where she just gets to be herself. She gets to show up authentically. She gets to show up in relationships with deeper understandings with the journey that she's gone on over the last couple of years. She gets to come in and provide that level of worth, provide that level of feminine insight. The um, She just gets to be a whole vibe. Like that's the, the, that keeps ringing in my head is this quarter for Venus is a whole vibe. Now she's got some important things to do, right? It's not that she's just sitting around in her lounge chair with a big umbrella, a big leaf umbrella being fed grapes and, and, you know, champagne. No, like she's actually doing work. She's got a lot of things going on. She has been helping this story while she was in Aries, she's been helping this story that we have continuing on with what occurred in April with the great Chiron eclipse. She's been there. She's done that. She got information. In Taurus, she is dealing with all of this Taurus energy. She's dealing with Uranus. She's dealing with Jupiter. She's dealing with this Venus-Jupiter conjunction at the end of May that is a explosion. Like Jupiter comes in and brings her thing and it's just like, the world's your fucking oyster. What do you want? What do you want out of your relationships? What do you want out of your finances? What do you want out of the creative pursuits that you're doing? What do you want out of all that you're harvesting? Let's think about it optimistically. That's great because Venus is in Taurus and Gemini. She can do that. Let's think about this in a different way. Let's think about the expansion that we can have. Let's own all of that. Now, Venus, like with Jupiter, it's, I really get the feeling that the, t the times and the days of us going back and, you know, questioning ourselves, questioning our value, questioning our worth, um, you know, there may always be a little something that like, you know, your inner saboteur that pings here and there. But with what Venus has been doing and the journey that she's been on, I kind of think that those days are done, right? Like, yes, they, it, the, your inner saboteur will fuck you up. He'll try to hijack you. Totally relevant. But you have the tools and you have the means to deal with that now. You know you are, you know, there's no swaying this anymore. Venus is kind of just like, I'm done with the bullshit. I'm done with the, I'm done with the self-lack, the self-deprecation. I'm done doing all of that. Now I know where I stand. I know my power. I know my worthiness. And I'm here to inject that into our personal experience here on earth as all these other energies and planets these big energies and planets like uranus and tor and uh jupiter excuse me are coming in to like have a state of reckoning let's bring this down to earth let's bring this down to our personal experience let's find the 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 worthiness within it all let's find the excitement within it all let's be able to find the beauty in in what is occurring all right that's where that's where i'm going to leave that 
Um, next question, again, if you have any questions, if you're joining me live and you have any questions, feel free to pop them in the chat. Even afterwards, you can throw them in the chat on YouTube. I'll do my best over the next weeks or so to um, answer any that come in the comments section. Next question, though, here is, could you discuss the impact of Jupiter heading into Gemini this quarter and what opportunities for expansion it might bring. Well, fuck, dude. Gem yes, I can. I absolutely can and I would love to because Jupiter heading into Gemini, I love, like, I love a good Jupiter in Taurus. I think Jupiter in Taurus was a wonderful experience for all of us. Um, I think it was a wonderful compliment to what Uranus is doing in Taurus for us. Um, I think Jupiter heading into Gemini. We are committed to broadening our horizons because you're wondering about it. Like the universe is not late, is never lazy. The universe does nothing by halves. There is a reason why Jupiter is heading into Gemini in May, in quarter two of 2024. And we are committed to broadening our horizons. Jupiter in Gemini. Pure, like that whole statement is nothing but a mantra, or I guess maybe a better word would be an ode to Jupiter in Gemini. The, the opportunities for expansion is unbound. And the reason why I say that is, is Taurus is a fixed sign. There are, there is a structure to Taurus that Jupiter, Jupiter's expansion rubs up against, right? The earth is on, is still the earth. It has structure to it. So Jupiter coming in can only expand into that structure. It can only expand into what Taurus, however you work with that energy, is doing for you or you allow it to do for you. It can only work within those parameters. When we get to an air sign like Gemini that is mutable, all boundaries dissolve. There is no boundaries. It is all expansive. Wherever the air can go, Jupiter can go and bring that level of expansion. It can bring that level of optimism. It can bring that level of um, clarity. It can bring that level of, uh, did I already say optimism? Optimism is a great word. We love Jupiter for its optimism. But it can bring that level of insight and understanding and knowledge to whatever it is that you are experiencing right now. And the other thing that Jupiter is kind of boundless in when it gets into Gemini is options. And as a Gemini rising, we fucking love options. And there is options to go around with Jupiter and Gemini. And what I love about that energy is you see the options and then all of a sudden as you're working through which options you want to pursue, more options come in. It's like this boundless circle of all potentialities. All things are possible. Um, all, all things are available. And that is really wonderful. Like this is really great energy and Jupiter's got a big job in Gemini, you know, like there will be some, as Jupiter transits through Gemini, his whole time there, there will be some tense things that are going to happen. There's going to be some, you know, squares, there's going to be sextiles, there's going to be trines, there's going to be conjunctions, there's going to be all of these different aspects that even yourself as a transiting Jupiter with your natal chart, but also with other transiting planets and Jupiter and Gemini can just rise above all of that. They can, it can just, it, it happens, you know, it's happening, but you're able to look at it from a different knowledge base. You're able to think about it from a different manner and you're able to see boundless amount of options 
that are available to you. And in a year of, of harvesting, that is exactly what we want. Because you may, all of this other energy may have broken your, you know, your tools that you're using to harvest all of this goodness to you. And Jupiter comes in, in Gemini and is like, you're good. A fucking hoe? Who needs a hoe? Nobody needs a hoe. We're fine. Here's what you can do instead. Let's go ahead and MacGyver this shit. We got it. You've got all that you need. You have all that you need within you and around you. The universe has already supplied you with everything you need. You just have to be able to look at it in, in that way. That is what Jupiter and Gemini can help with. All right, next question. What are the new moon and full moon dates for this quarter? And what rituals or practices do you recommend for these lunar events? Well, thank you for the question. Um, let me go ahead and pop this little bad boy up there. So if you remember when I talked about um, becoming part of the AstroVision community and that there were downloadable items for you, these are one of them. So I don't remember every new moon and full moon. They happen every two weeks. I know what season we're in. I know what's going to come, but I don't remember exactly all the dates right off the top of my head. That's why downloadable key sheets or a honeycomb is the best thing on the planet. So here are all of the dates. This again is free if you join AstroVision 2024, which is also free by the way, and you can download this and have it, um, put it in your calendar, whatever you need to do. But this is one of those sheets. So let's go to the then second part of that question about what rituals or practices do you recommend? So first off, since we are talking from a quarterly perspective, we did have an eclipse this quarter, right? We had the great Chiron eclipse. And I want to start there because with eclipses, I personally do not recommend you to do anything. Rituals or practices. An eclipse is a ritual in its own right. Let, let the eclipse be the ritual. There is no other things that you need to do. The eclipse will do it itself. Work with the universe here. You don't need to do any magic. You don't need to do any, um, you know, cleansing. You don't need to do any rituals. Now, again, this is a very broad statement. Um, and every individual is different. They're individual, they're different in their journey. They are different in their level of practice. There, I'm not, I, this is a generalization. I'm not going to say that if you, through your own divinatory practices or your communication with your spirit guides, your ancestors, your, um, you know, whatever that looks like for you, if you are called to do something on the eclipse, you're called. I, that's your choice. That is what it is. Personally, for me, I don't recommend anything. Be, exist, relax, permit, if warranted, do the things that you love. Be in the energy that you love. So that is what I recommend for eclipses. New moons. New moons are all about birthing, right? There's an idea that is being gestated. It's being hidden in the dark womb of the, of the moon and coming out and being ready to be birthed into the world. Full moons are all about the release. And they're all about the shedding of the things that are no longer needed because you go from the new moon where you birth, right? You go through the energy of learning what you birthed. And then in two weeks time, you get the full moon, which then can release the energy that's not needed in order to make the new moon energy actually fruitful at the next new moon to continue the cycle of, you know, ideas, change, release, ideas, change, birth, all of those things. 
So any sort of ritual or practice during a new moon that leads you to be internal, leads you to be um, birthing, leads you to be um, going inside, going into those dark spaces in a full moon, any ritual or practices that allows you to release, that allows you to see a different path forward, see things that need to change, see things that need to occur, um, are all really good rituals and practices. You could do a new moon and a full moon reading, tarot reading, divination reading, whatever that looks like. Personally, for me um, and, and our family, we do ritual in... Um, things that we love, being able to get out of like the day to day. So our typical ritual and practice that we started when we lived over in Hawaii was barbecuing or cigars and dominoes nights. So, you know, in Hawaii, we had a really ritualistic practice on every new moon and full moon. We would go out on the lanai and we would play dominoes, have whiskey and chocolate it was peanut butter whiskey, screwball, hello, and uh, smoke cigars and just have a really wonderful time um, playing, playing and enjoying life. Um, transitioning when we moved to Texas, now it's all about barbecuing around the new moon and full moon, like typically on the weekends, getting outside, getting out on our porch, still doing cigars and dominoes, listening to good music barbecuing, um, eating good food, drinking great whiskey. We've now gone from the screwball. We are now a Mitchers family. So there you go. Um, and just, you know, spending time connecting um, with each other. That's me and my husband. That's us and our pups. Spending time with each other. That's been our new moon and full moon ritual. All right. Next question. Um, let's see. Are there any lesser known events this quarter that we should be aware of and prepare for? Yes, there are. Um, there are two of them actually that I think are going to head, um, well, I know are going to head all the way through May and into June. So the first one is the Taurus Clusters. There is a lot of energy in Taurus that takes us all the way through May, even into Gemini season, and will begin to break apart in June. So that is energy that you want to pay attention to. Um, on my channel, Twitchy Tuesdays, we do um, astrological weeks. We do videos where we go over the week every week. I've talked a lot about what's happening in the Taurus clusters over there definitely would recommend looking at those Twitchy Tuesdays episodes. Um, the last one I did was called Taurus, Taurus, and More Taurus, which went through all of these clusters in detail. But that is absolutely um, an energy that is very, very present and coloring all of May and getting into June. The other energy, which was also covered in extents over, on, um, over in Twitchy Tuesdays, was Thoughtful Insights. And this was the label I gave to all of our luminaries and personal planets, sextiling Saturn. So the sun, the moon, Mercury, Mars, and um, Venus. And how as they are transiting all of this energy, they are getting this amazing sextile um, to Saturn in Pisces and what that unfolds over time. How Saturn in a, you know, during this time, how can we implement the Saturn teachings in a very productive and very supportive way? And when I say Saturn teachings, I'm meaning Saturn's energy in Pisces. So those are some, again, they're, they're events, but they're not any of these highlighted events that I have over here for April, May, and June. But, um, you know, they, they have a, they have a tenor to them. They have a little energetic vibe happening with them as we, as we transition through May and June. All right. This is the last question. So if you have been here joining us and you've got a burning question out there that you want to pop into the chat, 
please feel free to do so because um, we'll be ending here as soon as this question is over. And if not, and or you're watching this on replay, again, you can absolutely feel free to put them in the comments and I will work on answering those for you as quickly as possible. All right, last question of today is, how can we use the astrological insights from today's session to set effective intentions for the next quarter? Lovely question. All right, so you see all that's going on in quarter two. Quarter three, the quarter three mantra, right? Quarter two is we're committed, in, we're committed to broadening our horizons. The quarter three mantra is um, it is going to be a strange new world. I, I don't even, I'll have to go back and watch the overview. Like what I said about that, that but we'll have to see. We'll have to see how that comes out. But it is going to be a very strange new world, quarter three. And that is preparing us to get into quarter four. Um, I think for me, the intentions that you can do in May and in June to wrap up this quarter to bring us bring yourself into quarter three into this energy of a strange new world um, is thinking about utilizing Jupiter's optimism. Jupiter's jump into Gemini, dive into the Gemini at Gemini pool um, to think about what you know. When you hear it's going to be a strange new world, when you begin to understand what is upcoming into the next quarter, how can you take Jupiter's energy right now and his optimism in Gemini to think about it differently, to talk about it differently, to find different options, to get, get new knowledge, to keep it in a positive light for yourself? So that is to me one of the big things because Mars is no joke. Like Mars, now that Mars is moving and at the beginning of the Zodiac, now that Mars has been rebirthed in Aries, Mars is no fucking joke. Um, Mars getting into Aries took DEFCON up to DEFCON 3. Personal opinion, agree, disagree, would love to, would love to discuss. But Mars in Aries and his journey throughout the rest of this year, we have a DEFCON 3 situation. We are buzzing with Mars energy. Will he take it to DEFCON 2 and 1? Don't know. That is, that's still up for debate. But he is my planet to watch this year. And quarter three and quarter four, he's got some big fucking moves that he is making. Um, you know, him, his meetup with Pluto, no fucking joke. Like, the, these are not like little energies. These are very impactful things. So if you're not intimate with Mars, if Mars is not a planet that, that you've ever explored and worked with personally, that might be a good thing in quarter two is May and June are here with, with Jupiter and Gemini, with all of this Gemini energy, might be a good thing to put on your bucket list to begin to get more acquainted with Mars, to begin to get more acquainted with how Mars works with you, where is your natal Mars, etc. Um, in quarter three and quarter four, we've got Saturn and Jupiter doing a three passer. So they'll have this conversation three different times. That's going to be something to look out for August 19th. It's going to be a day. It's going to be a day y'all. And we've got an October moon that pretty much is blowing like the socks off of me with how like amazing this moon is. Um, so there's a lot that's coming up. There is a lot of strange new worlds that are going to be occurring um, in quarter three and in quarter four. And, you know, how can you see with Gemini, with 
what, you know, May and June in the energy here. How can you see the broader picture of everything, but stay present in the now and work with the energies that are here with you, that are trying to show and help you get to the next stage? Um, the last thing that I will say about quarter three, and again, utilizing quarter two to get to quarter three, if you live in the United States, um, there is a lot that's going to be happening. Like, there's no other fucking way to say it. There are not favorable placements happening in the U.S. Sibley chart for the rest of the year, especially leading up to our November 2024 election. Um, presidential election, Joe Biden and Donald Trump. And the only reason why I'm calling them out is because they, at this current time, are the front runners um, for that election based on all things that we see and hear. Although we can always, um, we can always have a deeper conversation about that. But their natal charts, there are not favorable placements with current transits over quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four, um, and their natal charts. There's just not. It's challenging um, astrology. And I really think that Jupiter and Uranus, that conjunction that they had on 420, Jupiter and Uranus um, is truly coloring Jupiter and Uranus meetups, especially in conjunctions, the energy that that provides, um, the friction that that provides is playing a huge role in the United States story right now. Um, one other thing that I'll just leave you with, because I think it's amazing, is transiting Jupiter. So, uh, excuse me, let me just level set two. Not only is Jupiter and Uranus playing this huge role, but we, the United States is also having a nodal return as well. So there's that too. But let me go back to Jupiter and Uranus. Transiting Jupiter. So when Jupiter gets into Gemini, transiting Jupiter will conjunct the United States Sibley chart natal Uranus legitimately on fucking Independence Day. Uh, when I saw that, that was off. The universe is just being witty at this point, right? Like, let's laugh. Let's have a good joke. The universe is amazing. Doesn't do things by half. There is literally no other way to describe it. But Jupiter and Uranus isn't done. and that energy, whatever that friction, whatever that energy that Jupiter and Uranus is providing plays out for the rest of this year. So I just, between the nodal return, between all the other things in the Sibley chart, Jupiter and Uranus is really activating things in the United States. And I don't, who knows what that looks like, right? Who knows what all is going to come out? Nobody knows. I can tell you, though, the astrology has um, has some very interesting placements in it as we get to quarter three and quarter four of this year as it pertains to the U.S. Sibley chart. So there is that. I think that that is where we are going to leave it. I'm looking at the chat. I don't see anything additional or any other questions in the chat. So again, Feel free to leave anything that you need, any questions that you have inside of comments. And once again, this is the live session for AstroVision 2024 quarter two. That is a free program that you can sign up for where you get a 2024 overview, the quarter one and quarter two overviews. You'll have um, exclusive access to all overviews, whether that's early or through the rest of the year. There are exclusive to row readings for each quarter and downloadable key date sheets, including the moons that you saw during this program. So I will be doing these every quarter, these lives. So the next one will be in August. Ooh. August 11th, right before my birthday. Love that. So um, let me, actually, it's probably not the 11th. Let me look. 
July, August, it will be August 10th. So two days before my birthday, we'll do another live and we'll get into all of the energy of quarter three and all of your questions. And remember, if you are part of the AstroVision community, all of your questions take priority before we move to any of the chatted questions. So there you go. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for joining me. Look forward to seeing you in our AstroVision 2024 community. You can find all of that in the description box or on my profile. Love you much. Have a great rest of your quarter. Talk to y'all later. Bye.